Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 22 of the Digital to Dice podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And today we've got a terrific topic today. We're going to talk about UPS or PDF. Do you like to download your cards immediately and print them out, or do you want to wait for them in the mail? we got a lot of comments to go over, a lot of listener comments to go over, as well as stuff we've had on Facebook and on the Delphi forums, and uh, along with what we're playing. So we've got a jam-packed episode here, episode 22, coming up for you next. Should be fun. All right, so uh, are you had enough of the cold, Ron? Have I had enough of my cold or the cold? The cold. It is bitter. It is bitter cold here in the East. Uh, Alexa, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 5 degrees. And Alexa, what's the wind chill? The noun wind chill is usually defined as the apparent temperature felt on the exposed human body. Only for the <laughs> you asked. <laughs> now, what is the wind chill? Hmm, I'm not sure. It was 21 below this morning. Yeah, it is cold. It was single digits up here today in the regular temperatures. I, yeah. I, I ran a couple of errands. I was like, okay, I'm done. And yeah, I look- we're, we're, we're not seeing 10 degrees at least for a few more days. Yeah, it, it got really cold. In fact, what 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 really stinks is I had all the shoveling done. I had the path. The sun melted what little snow there was. So everything was nice and bare, at least as far as the uh, the driveways and the, the walkways. And then we had a little squall last night. We had a five-minute squall, and it just coated everything and iced it all up again. It's like, oh, man. Yep. Uh, my phone was going off about 2 o'clock yesterday. Uh, afternoon, thankfully, not in the middle of the night with snow squall warnings and get off the roads. And it just did it throughout the northern and central part of Vermont for about four hours. Yeah. It, it's Every, uh, everything. It, it's, it's, it's definitely looking a lot like Christmas. Yeah. And I remember it was last year, not at this time. I want to say it was February of last year. So February of 2019, which well, this year, uh, wasn't it Dave Koch? They shut down for two days because it was minus 20. Oh, yeah, the 45, 50 below wind chills. Yeah, it was so cold they shut down, and they put up a notice. That, Look, you know, we'll, we'll try to get back to you on email, but for the most part, we're shut down for a couple yeah, of days. Yeah, and, and it's, it was just so bitter and yeah. un- unsafe. Now, I have friends in Australia, or a friend that lives in Australia, and the average temperature for the continent yesterday was 105 degrees. And that's that's here on Earth, right? Yes, oh. that that is not in your oven. That's not making your the Christmas cookies. <laughs> that is an honest to god temperature in a country. Well, send some of that degrees. over here. We'll take twenty degrees of that. No problem. I, I, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure she'd give you twenty degrees of that too. So. <laughs> too funny. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So today's topic, we're going to talk uh, UPS versus PDF. I mean, do you like your physical cards, or do you like the stuff to come in? Uh, immediately after you buy it with a download. So we're going to talk about that. we got a lot of comments we're going to go over. First off, let's get to uh, what we're playing, shall we? Shall we? I told you to stay out of Mrs. Garrett's homemade cold recipe stuff. Now you're looped. Uh, was that Facts of Life? Uh, or Different Strokes, either one. Oh, she was in both, right? She was the she was the housekeeper, Mrs. Garrett. I I Mrs. think of her Garrett. in Facts of Life, not so much different. Tootie, get out of the homemade cold medicine. <laughs> there we go. There's the line. Oh man, good stuff. All right, so yeah, it was For, uh, Formula Forty Four. Oh yeah, For, Formula Forty Four D. That's my dad used to take all the time when we were kids. I did it once. I was the happiest I think I was that year in college. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, I'll, I'll go to uh, what I'm playing first because it'll be real quick. I've really mm-hmm. been kind of cutting cards, uh, separating cards, putting them in the, the little coin pouches there and printing out the labels. So I, I think I'm almost done because I, I got a bunch of stuff on the Black Friday sales. And there's uh, obviously some teams that I like to print out when I get the um, the strat seasons when they only give you to six teams and then they send you the uh, the PDF for everybody else or the Word documents for all the other teams. There's always teams I like to print out and for things I want to do. So I, I guess that's part of the hobby is doing yeah, all oh, that. Absolutely. But I, literally hours. I would get up in the morning with my coffee and I 
you know, take out a box of the strat cards and I just start separating them and putting them in the things. And then I, that at night I'd be, you know, watching some stuff here on YouTube, you know, either one of your games or whatever. And I'd be printing stuff out on the printer and then cutting them out. So I spent so many hours this week just trying to clean off my table, you know, because the tables had all the, the boxes from UPS that come in and then some of the stuff I printed, I stacked up. So I, I tried to get most of it done. I think I'm almost done. The table's just about clear. I think I got one more season left to separate and put in folds, but I'll hold off on that for right now. So I made some progress, but I guess I guess that's part of the hobby. Yeah. How long do you actually take to read some of the cards? You know, who are you curious about? Well, that is the fun part about it. We can get into that a little bit later in our topic, but it is fun when you're sitting there. Like I had the 1973 baseball season, and I was really hemming and hawing over whether to get that because that's a shade before my time. Okay, just a shade. I, you know, I was more late, mid to late 70s. I was reading some of these cards like, oh, I can't wait to play some of these teams because I remember all these guys. And some of these teams are just all-star teams. You know, the Oakland A's and even guys like Sal Bando, who's, mm-hmm. I don't know if he's an all-star or not, but I remember Sal Bando. And I and you look at some of the guys that were on different teams and like, this guy's like a Hall of Famer, but I don't remember him playing on this team and that team. And so you'd sit and I wouldn't so much look at the card, but I look at the names and I was like, wow, this is going to be a fun season. This 73 season, I recognize a lot of these guys. And me being a casual baseball guy, I was pretty excited mm-hmm. about that. So cool. So I do. I do look at uh, some of the cards when I'm when I'm you know putting them away or even some of the ones I print. Like I'll go through the teams. Like I, I don't know about anybody that's listening to us, but my OCD, which is I have very bad. Okay, I check locks six times before I go to bed. Check lights. You know, I'm just wicked OCD, and. A part of that OCD is being a completionist. So when I order seasons, I like to print them all out, even if I'm not going to play every team. And this goes for Downey, too. When I I get a Downey game, I have to print out all the teams. So I have them in a folder. So if I if I decide to play a game, my OCD says, if I want to play, if it's football, Kansas City, you know, whoever, you know, Baltimore, I want to make sure that they're there and I don't have to go print them. I just want to pull them out of the folder and play. And the same with the hockey. So I've been printing a lot of the, the stragglers team. So like 1969, 70, they give you the six teams. Well, I went the other night and printed the other six teams. So now I have the complete 1969, 70 season. So with all 12 teams. And I did the same with 71, 72, which I think at that point there were 14 teams. Now the, the, the other seasons, 83 and 98, I think 98 is complete, but I think I got an 83, 84 season that only had six teams. Well, I'm not going to go print out 20 teams. I'm not quite that OCD, but I did print out a handful of teams I wanted to play. For example, what I will do is is I will go through the teams on the Word document and, and kind of go through which teams I think I want to play. And I stumbled on Detroit. I think it was 83, 84 Detroit. I think you're right, yeah. 18-year-old Steve Eiserman. Of course, I'm printing out Detroit and playing Detroit in 1983. So so that's kind of what I've been doing. I think I might have played a couple of games of Strat PC Hockey. I'm going to stream that. Uh, I've done some videos on my YouTube channel for the, the Strat Hockey Utility. I finally settled down. I think I got three or four videos run up uh, on that, kind of setting up seasons, putting in the teams, and, and how you can use that. And I showed, actually showed how I used the Strat Hockey Utility to keep track of my final score project the Downey final score season that I did. And I showed how I you can put one player and one goalie on each team, and then you can just put the final score in, and you're done. So that's a very yeah, versatile. Yeah, you're not to do full stats for that. That's just... Yeah, that weird. was a very versatile program. So I did a few videos on that as well as uh, the action PC Hawks. So that's about what I did. Now, you've had a lot more excitement than I have as far as game playing goes. Uh, let's see. Uh, football replay continues down to the final t- almost two weeks of the season now. Uh Turnovers kill, man. An action PC football turnovers kill. I did San Francisco and the Jets, and what could in my '86 replay, and what could very well be a Super Bowl preview. And it was a good game for three quarters, and then Ken O'Brien threw four interceptions in a row, or on five possessions, and San Francisco rolled. It was just one of those things. You you just know turnovers, just like texting and driving, kills. Um, and the other thing this week, action PC related, was uh, baseball came out. 
and I did a stream last night on on Twitch, and it's now uploaded to YouTube. That I, when each of the the big four games come out, I show it on screen and play some and go through the changes for the year and was quite impressed it was a subtle update for action pc baseball this year it wasn't a full-fledged new graphics and all that all the all the scheduling screens are now integrated and the front screen is different but in the side for the managerial things when you go to assemble a lineup for a game it now gives you tabs for uh splits versus lefties versus righties average on base percentage and slugging for the batters and for the pitchers and it also shows you if you're concerned about how much you're using a player um their real life numbers compared to what you've done in the replay and i just found that that's kind of always been there before but not in that particular lineup building menu and so I just thought that was a great addition for players who, I mean, I do as played because it's just easier to make sure that people play when they're supposed to play. But for those people like you who like to tinker and maybe not want to overuse a player or want to know specifically how they do against a, a lefty or righty pitcher, it just made that information so much easier to find. Oh, nice. And I saw it too. It, uh, it looked like the ball shadow got a little bit bigger too. You said that. Maybe it was just me. Uh, maybe I'm comparing that to OOTP because there was one game I was playing and I couldn't tell if it was a line drive, a ground ball, or a fly ball. I couldn't tell and until the play was over. But last night it was quite obvious it was a fly ball to deep center field when I watched you play that. That shadow got really big. Okay, because our dear friend now, Red Sox fan, thinks that the uh... – animation is smoother um i didn't play with any of this, that those settings it last did night look on, a little mm-hmm. less choppy yeah a little bit I noticed the replay uh when you would select a video chalkboard replay that it would correct itself and look right which it didn't last year you know oh, it's good. nice it's a nice feature to have um what was the other thing so the, inning, course, the, the game, inning number the inning number up on the top and now you can click on the weather and display that on the screen so hopefully that means that weather has a little more impact on the game. Um, but all, overall, I thought it was quite nice. Uh, what was the other in-game thing that I saw? Uh, there were so many strikeouts last night that it you just, I just couldn't really tell. But, yeah, it was it was fun. Now, could so, you set up a baseball game for today and play today's weather? And would that have an impact on the game, you think? I think you could. I know you can can in football. You can set real life weather. In the golf game, you actually can hit a button on the course. Yeah, you go to the nearest airport in the golf game. Right. And and so if you want to play Augusta in December, you can, but I'm but just go, I'm just go. wondering in the baseball game, if you set up a you know, a, a December game and it's zero degrees, I just wonder what that would do. But that sounds interesting. Sounds like a good project for you. Put that down. Write that down. Sure. <laughs> right after you. Anything else you've been playing? Uh, and of course I've been doing my 81, 82, uh, strat PC hockey replay, uh, restarted that. That is just so much fun. It's just so much fun. That last game I played were the Rangers and the Islanders and you could tell those teams just hate each other and it, and it just kind of comes out in the cards. You can just see it, but Billy Smith didn't get any penalties. Guy Lafleur did the last time I played Montreal. He got four minutes. He and the Quebec goalkeeper goalie got into it. Yeah, you said that was it. Was that Bouchard was in the net? Danny Bouchard. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you said you you sent me that. Said, Lafleur got four minutes in penalties. That's too funny. Yeah, Guy yeah. Lafleur. Yeah, I get some weird stuff too in, in some of the games I played. I played uh, Chicago in the um, the the Seals. No, the Capitals. And I'm playing 74, so the Capitals are an expansion team. So Chicago goes up four to nothing, they're destroying the Capitals. And all of a sudden, we start the second period. The Capitals scored two goals in 30 seconds. That was kind of cool. It made it four to two. It kept the game close for a while. Chicago, I think, won six to three or seven to three. But it made it interesting and it made it fun in the whole bit. And I didn't think the Capitals had a chance, but they they cut the lead to four to two. That poor goalie for Washington, uh, I forget his name now, but he, boy, he he saw it like. 30 shots in the first period or something like that. It was that poor guy. You just got to figure with teams like that, that you just kind of wonder how they just skate off the ice in the middle of the game and said, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. The, well, know. there was no joke. There was a couple of stories I heard about the seals when I think they, when they were in, was it Cleveland they were at? 
and they weren't getting was, paid. Was Malosh still there? When they Malosh was Cleveland? with them the whole time. Malosh was with them from California, to Cleveland, and Minnesota, so he he was there the whole time. But I I don't know if they were if they were the California Steel or the Cleveland Barons, but they, they hadn't get paid for a few weeks, and they it was right for a game, and the, the players had a meeting, and they're like, are we gonna even play? Tonight, because we're not getting paid, and they decided to play instead of, you know, not going out and skate. But that's how bad it got. And I, I think there was a story like that, too, in the WHA, where one of the – probably more than one team had that happen, where they weren't getting paid, and the, the players were like, why are we even playing here? But they did. And I think that, that was the thing back in the – wasn't there a football league that the, the championship teams never got paid either? Was it the – WFL? Yeah, the World Football League. <laughs> And the game got over, and the cops went in and raided the locker rooms and took all the equipment out because they yep. owed so much money or something. Yep. Oh man, the stories from the seven—that stuff just doesn't happen today. There's a great book on the ABA, and I think it's Red, White, and Blue Balls or something like that, and just has a lot of those similar stories of not getting paid and being chased out by cops in the night. And yeah, is that the one that uh, Will Ferrell owned the team? It is. Yeah. That's well, no. It- Will, uh, I th- think there was a Will Ferrell movie. No, that was the ABL. Oh, and they okay. played up here in Vermont. Rick Riley owned part of the team up here. They split between oh, nice. Burlington, where where I am and you've been, and uh, Barrie, which is in the center central part of the state. So they played 20 games here in Burlington and 20 games in Barrie. Hmm. And they made it one season. The league made it one season. Oh, yeah, that's too, that, that, that stuff happens. But that yeah. that made it interesting too. That made a really interesting t- t- mm-hmm. you know talk to about all those leagues that kind of came and went and the whole bit. And they challenged the established leagues, which which is probably the best thing to come out of that. Yes. Oh, it, absolutely. It made them change the way they do things and the whole bit. So uh, that's cool. Uh, oh, the only other thing I played, Ron, is I uh, I I did play some uh, on the PlayStation Four. I streamed some Star Wars gameplay to Twitch. I think I sent some of it over to YouTube. So you might see some video game stuff there. Because uh, I've been doing the Game Hounds podcast again, and we talk video games, and I've been really enjoying the uh, just kicking back at night. Sometimes I just don't want to play the cards and dice. I'm just, just going to mind, mm-hmm. mindly shoot some. I go shoot some stormtroopers or something, whatever I do. But it, that's been enjoyable too. And uh, just a little teaser for for you, Ron, and the audience. I got a little teaser here. I pur- I purchased my first Cookies. Well, my, my in a long time. I don't say my first ever, but it's been a while. I purchased a non-sports cards and dice game. It's supposed to arrive Saturday. So we'll be talking about that on the next show, I'm sure, about what mm-hmm. it is. And I plan on getting a lot of videos for this, this game. It looks really fun. I told you a little bit about it. Uh, the order's been placed. It should be here Saturday, so I can't wait to play this non-sports cards and dice game. It looked, it, It's a very simple game, but it looked really, really fun. I can't wait to play it. Looks looks intricate. Simple and intricate. Yeah, it had. A, it was more of a, I don't want to say time management game, but it was like you were putting out fires, so to speak. What do I do? Okay, here's what I have. What am I going to do with my turn to counteract the cards that I'm playing against type of deal? But I'll get into more of that uh, when I get it and have the videos up. But um, So anyway, uh, all right, should we get on to the main yeah. topic? The, yes. the meat and potatoes? The meat and potatoes. All right, here we go. Edith, where's the pot roast? Coming right up, Archie. What was that, all in the family? All all in the family. Oh, boy. (laughs) So anyway, so today's topic is UPS versus PDF, and that basically that just signifies, uh, you know, do you want to order your cards digitally and get them in the mail immediately or do you want to wait? I mean, do you want to wait for the uh, the stuff to come in from the factory, factory cut, the whole bit, um, and, and that way you don't have to do anything. You just open them up and you're good to go. So, and and what prompted this discussion was was me telling Ron about you know we would we would be chatting and I would be tearing cards or cutting cards or sorting cards or counting cards or whatever it was. <laughs> And so I got talking about that. It's like, you know, it was really kind of cool a package showed up. And there's something magical about a package showing up. But at the same time, it's kind of cool that I can order a game and print it out and be playing in five or ten minutes too. So there's there's like the best of both worlds. So we just started chatting back and forth. We said this would make a nice topic to throw out there to the community and get your thoughts on, you know, ordering the PDFs or the Word doc, whatever you want to call it, the digital stuff that you download immediately versus waiting for stuff to arrive 
uh, in the mail, UPS, USPS, or FedEx, whatever it comes in at. Okay, mm-hmm. and we got a ton of comments, so we're gonna read the comments and we're gonna talk about some of these comments. And and Ron, quite honestly, there was a lot of a lot of things brought up that hadn't crossed my mind. Lots of good points between shipping to different countries and anticipation and all that. So yeah, so let's get right into it. Okay, so these come off our Facebook group. Well, by the way, our website digital to dice dot com. Is where you can find all of our episodes. the uh, The text line nine seven eight seven five one dice nine seven eight seven five one three four two three, and on Facebook it's facebook dot com slash groups slash digital to dice. And so we got comments from our Facebook group as well as the uh, the Delphi forum. I put it up on the um, the tabletop sports. Oh, and uh, oh, by the way, Kevin wanted me to mention he's doing the the Christmas giveaway. The Christmas okay. game giveaway thing. So if you go to the Delphi forums and look for, the, I believe it's over on the tabletop sports section. Yeah, that that's one of the, the bigger ones there that everybody belongs yeah. to. So look for tabletop sports on the Delphi, and um, I think it's under the general category. And uh, he's doing the the uh, I guess it's an annual Christmas giveaway where people um, put up games and they will uh, you know and everybody you know get, gets one and gives one so to speak. And it's, it's oh nice like a secret Santa type kind of sort of yeah. And uh, s- some uh, publishers have put up games and some normal people have just like put up a season or something like that. So but the idea is it's supposed to be no cost to you if you want to get in on it but i think you have to give as well as receive in this so you just can't put out your hand and get everything right but yeah but check it out for more details go to the delphi forums and uh, uh, kevin's doing a great job with that he wanted me to mention that so i want to get that in awesome uh, now a different kevin kicks us off today with some of the comments so when we asked about ups or pdf so kevin a says it's a balance PDFs are quicker and cheaper, but you pay for it in the cost of printing and cutting your own, which which is true. There's, there's a cost that comes with that. It's also nice that if you spill something on your PDFs, you can reprint them. That's a very good point, too. Yeah. So have that option of, like, what do I do? And I, I've seen pictures on Facebook of people that their dogs tore apart a card. Uh, Stratomatic hockey card or baseball cards or hockey cards and Diet Coke do not mix. Yeah, so what? Say that firsthand. Yeah, what do you do if you ruin a card? Yeah, so that's a good point there. Uh, I can tell you, though, that last year I bought a slew of PDFs, more than a 1,000 pages to print off. I still don't have all of them done. Uh, Dave will be over to help you with that next yeah, week. Yeah, I, I can say that I've bought my share of cardstock and ripped through that. And I think I bought the uh, the 250 count of these number six coin envelopes. And I went through the whole box. I'm like, holy cow, I got 250 teams Woo-hoo, between baseball and hockey. So, yeah, I hear that. Uh, he also says, I will say that also depends on the sport in some cases. There are football games that don't have any individual cards or team charts. Those are easy to print off. I do agree with that. And you don't have to spend any time cutting. Yes, yes, some of the downy games are fantastic for that. Uh, cutting is what takes up the biggest amount of time. Printing is where the money costs come in. So, Kevin, yes, great, great uh, stuff there. Stuart says, the shipping costs are very expensive for Canadians, so I focus on computer games and PDFs. And that's one thing, Ron, that uh, living in the States here, we really don't come to deal it's with. It's amazing that it, it is so ridiculously expensive to ship to Canada. Yeah, and even UK, we got a couple comments coming up on that too. Right. But, but yeah, so that's a very good point there. That if, if it, you know, you might as well just print them out at that point. Uh, let's see. Robert says, "I find when I purchase a PDF, I don't play the game as much as if I waited for it to be delivered." Good, good point. Good point there. There's something to being forced to wait. That yeah, now you appreciate it more. I I can definitely. I hear that. I have quite a few PDF games and old hard drives somewhere that have been lost. Uh, Final score hockey, for instance. (laughs) The exception is when I have a game components printed at Kinko's or Staples. Uh, Craig says, I prefer cards, but nice ones. So I don't buy PDF often unless it's a dead ball where there are no cards. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so sometimes there is no option. It's, you know. It's it's download or nothing. Todd right. Todd comes in and says PDF. You can use good card stock compared to some games that you order that cost seventy plus dollars plus shipping and are on paper thin card stock. Yeah, yeah. So you so you uh, yeah you if you print your own you can go as thick or as thin as you want. I have the eighty pound stock run that I use. My printer takes that fairly well. Once in a while I'll get a jam, but I I was using the. I started with the 30, then I went to the 65. Now I'm up to the 80. And 80 seems pretty good for what I what I use. Um, yeah, you want you want to be able to print them that are durable. 
Yeah. Especially in those strat seasons that you have where the Bruins may not have been one of the six teams that were selected to be printed because that's who you're going to play or the Seals or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I use the 80 pound. I know some people go a little thicker than that. I think when I went to Staples, they had the 110 pound. Yeah. That's I, the next step would be 110. And yeah, that's, it is really nice, but I'm finding the, the 80 pound is really fine for the, for the stuff that I've been doing here. And sometimes it depends on the game. Sometimes I'll bump it down to 65. If it's like a like a downy football game when I'm, I'm going to print out 18 teams, I really don't need. If I'm just going to look at it once to get a reference, then right. 65 is what I'll go with that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Seth writes in, if you don't have a good printer ink set up, patience a proper basic craft skills, then UPS would be better. That's a good point. Uh, I actually went out and purchased a color laser printer. Fairly inexpensive. It really wasn't that expensive. I was surprised. No, it that. wasn't. Yeah, I got a good deal on that. And I think I uh, I went to Staples and I compared it to the Amazon, so I got a really good deal. They matched the price. So, yeah, I was fairly inexpensive. And even the um, the thing about the laser color printer, which I always shied away from because I thought the cost was bad, but the, the cost not only came down, but if you have the inkjet printers, man, those inkjet things, they dry up. They, you got to clean them. They're so small. Uh, you, I'm always they're run, fussy. They're uh, fussy. Yeah, I I had a color. I'm, obviously, we all had inkjet printers because they're cheaper, and you know to pick them up for like sixty bucks, some of them. But they they didn't do a good job. The ink smeared. I found, and I just went through cartridges so fast, and they clogged up. And if you don't use them for a week, then they you print it out, and some colors print, and some don't. The laser printer that I got, it's it's a pretty, it's very inexpensive. It's um, it's a. I'll have to look at the brand the next time I turn around over here, but it it does a super job of printing, and the cartridges never jam. At least that was what the review said. You you can let it sit for a week, two weeks, a month, and you can still print and be fine. Now, obviously, if you let it for a year or two, I wouldn't guarantee anything. But the idea is you don't have these little nozzles, like the ink jets that get right. So yeah, I went with a laser one. So. Uh, yeah, so so uh, Seth c- continues to say, I personally prefer PDF for the following reasons: I can modify or custom make any card, like adding pictures, even to make it to make it easily play the game better in a computer. Oh, I messed that up. I can modify or custom make any cards, like adding pictures, or even easily making the game to be playable in a computer using programs like Tabletop Simulator. You've done, you've certainly put logos and pictures on cards. Before. Yeah, I've done that same thing too. Is with the Downey stuff, I'll I'll drop the football helmet on and and or add some colored bars or something so I can tell the teams apart, and that that mm-hmm. makes it more enjoyable when you can add to it. Yeah, so I I definitely agree with that. Uh, over the years. I have purchased bulk ink, cardstock paper, premium gloss, or picture paper, a laminator, a corner round tool, where some games have ended up looking like the original, in some cases better. So Seth really goes to town, it sounds like, with his stuff, and he prefers the PDF. Uh, Anne from the Sports Sim Magazine writes in, for us, it's all dependent on how easily re-downloadable the game is in case of a hard drive crash or purchase of a new computer. Yeah, that's a good point, too. So some of these games, you, you have X amount of downloads or you can only download for so long, and then if you yeah if you crash and you don't have it, then yeah. If it takes days or weeks to get the okay for the re-download, I'll take the physical media that I can just reinstall quickly. If it's easy, I'll take the download or the .exe file or the PDF. Costs also matter, as PDF should be cheaper downloads due to the added costs incurred by the customer for printing. And usually right. the PDFs are, are usually cheaper. Uh, Jeff writes in, I agree with Stuart. Shipping to Canada is expensive, so PDF is a cheaper solution. I still order some hard copies, but if I have the option, I prefer PDF. I also like to cut the sheets and check out the individual cards. Same as separating the hard copies, I can also keep PDF sets on a cloud drive, which is sometimes what I do is I'll throw them on a cloud or I'll throw them on a um, a little uh, thumb drive or something like that so mm-hmm. I don't lose them, uh, and it reduces the storage as well if I don't need to print the set you know, until I start a new project. Michael, if you buy an HP Insta Ink printer, that is the one you can pay less than $0.03 cents per page no matter how much color you're using, and if you buy a cheap paper cutter, it is considerably cheap uh, cheaper than printing and shipping. It does take time to cut the cards. Oh, yeah, it does. Printing and, and cutting cards, as I know, does take time. It really does. Yes, it does. But, uh, yeah, you can you can really do this, you know, somewhat fairly inexpensively. Three they, cents a page is pretty cheap, too. Yeah, yeah, it really is. 
Uh, and I, I suppose that, you know, you can probably go as crazy as you want. Uh, who was it? We were just talking about Seth. That seems like he has a pretty good setup and rounding the corners and making it look good. And, and uh, his cars probably look beautiful. I love the idea of, of having your own laminator. It just protects things so well. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Especially charts. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, David writes in, living in the UK and being a fan of US-based games, PDFs offer me a way of avoiding a two-week-plus delay in posted customs charges that can double cost. Good point there. It's, it's a, not only you're paying, you're, you're waiting. Yeah, I get that. Uh, however, it can be very tiresome printing out hundreds of player cards and then cutting them out. Solution? Move to the States. <laughs> I remember buying software from the UK or Australia and having it delayed and coming with all sorts of custom stickers on the envelope. And my wife was wondering, what in the world did I buy? It's I a bo- soccer game, honey. I bought some goalie pads one time from uh, Czechoslovakia or Slovakia. Or, really? Yeah. They were very special ones I ordered years ago and um, they took a while to come through customs too and it was kind of funny following the path and seeing all the stickers on them too yeah so yeah uh, let's see uh, from Delphi uh, P Funk one writes in there's something satisfying about having something come to your door that you can tear into right away after a little delayed gratification. Maybe it's just the anticipation, something like when you were 12 and waiting weeks for that package of Strat or Apper or whatever cards to come in the mail. Now they come much sooner, thankfully, but I still enjoy my daily checks of tracking information leading up to an out-for-delivery message. Yep. Don't get me wrong, I do my share of downloads as well, but I get a genuine kick out of getting something in the mail or UPS, as long as it doesn't get lost or stolen, which has happened once or twice. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about here is that I, I I went through both of a Black Fridays. I got some stuff right in on the email that I printed out and other stuff. I was getting packages in. I was like, ooh, look, another package. And you hear the truck pull around the corner, and yeah, there's, a, there's that anticipation. Yep. Is that is that my order? Is that my order? And what did Brown do for you today? Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Uh, Fuzzy says, love getting stuff in the mail. Nothing like seeing that mail truck pulling up on the street and having your games or card sets delivered. The best thing now is we don't have to wait long at all. So another person talking about how quicker the shipping is compared to what was, was back in the day. Uh, and he goes on to say, back in the day, it was a week for Strat and two weeks for a BLM or uh, Nagamco. Uh, great memories waiting for that delivery. Well, Fuzzy, they have you're on a first name basis with all those people anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see. Peter writes in. I echo this. Uh, echo the others on this. Nothing like the excitement of getting something physical in the mail. I do mostly PDS mainly because I live in Canada, and the cost of shipping to here from the U.S. is usually a lot. So, yeah, another another vote for PDS because of of a cost and time thing. Mm-hmm. Let's see, Jim. For me, it all depends on the size of the file. I'll gladly. Print and cut an NHL original six or even 12 team league, but no way I'd do a 32 baseball team with a thousand plus players. Let me know how 2004 Strat goes for you there. Uh, that's the one that I have not, <laughs> not that's still in the box. I have not uh, separated those at all. I, I did, it took me a couple hours to do the 1973 season. I think there's only 24 teams. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, PG Radbar, if I'm saying that correctly, I never buy PDFs. I want printed cards only. Something, you know, having that p- piece of paper in your hand. You know, I, I get that. Not that I get that personally, yeah. but, you know, I, I get that, that kind of physical connection to a, playing a cards and dice game as opposed to, I mean, I'll put it this way. You can get a good, you can go to your local convenience store and buy yourself a DiGiorno. Or you can spend the extra five bucks and get something delivered to your door. Which do you want? It depends what you want. It depends what you're in the mood uh, have for. Have you ever eaten a DiGiorno pizza before? I actually never have. Uh, I probably have, yeah. I live in town. If I want pizza, I'll pay for someone to have it delivered. You know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. So I, I get that. Yeah, but sometimes you're on the weekend and it's a Saturday or a Sunday and you're like, you get the itch and you're like, Stouffer's- you know. French bread pizzas. It's like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna order something and download it right now and play it right now. So yes. that is. Oh, you're talking about the cards, not pizza. Yeah, that pizza's up on me. Yeah, we always have a, a, a spare frozen pizza somewhere in the house. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, let's see. GW who says because I'm cheap and like quick play games, PDFs work for me. 
Uh, I can even play card sets from the PDFs, although it's a little bit cumbersome. Yeah, that would make sense. So you could print I've them out. Yeah, and just look right on the cards and not have to, to cut them all up. So, yeah. Uh, T. Liz writes in, I much prefer UPS, but the cost of shipping to Canada makes it prohibitively expensive. So PDF has become the fallback option. Another one about the, the cost of shipping and the whole bit. Uh, Dave J. writes in, I prefer to order the cards but PDS can be great for evaluating a game. That good that's point. a that's a good very point. good point right there. And I've done that a couple of times. I'm like, okay, let me let me just order the PDF version just to check it out and see if it's worth my time. And then if it is, then maybe I'll jump in and, and invest some money in the game. So yeah, Dave J, uh, fantastic, fantastic point there. He goes on to say, sometimes I will spend the ten to fifteen dollars to buy a PDF of a new game, look it over, evaluate it. Then if I think I will like it, I'll order the printed version. If I don't like it, I won't. Either way, the initial investment uh, is money well spent for me to check out, you know, Excellent basically check point. out a new game. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, another situation in which I'll order the PDF is if the game features team sheets rather than cards, like a lot of the Donnie games, and, and somebody else brought this up too. Those are easy to print on a standard printer, and I don't have to go through and cut out the cards. Roster card baseball, same deal. It's all on, yep. on one sheet. Uh, uh, but he goes on to say, uh, but most of the time I do prefer the cards themselves, so I don't have to go through the time and expense of printing myself, which often makes up the difference in cost between printed and PDF versions. Plus, so many manufacturers, uh, manufacturers are offering high-quality cards, I would never be able to replicate that quality myself printing it's them. It's amazing what I've seen little mom and pop companies do with car payoff pitch, which I know you don't have. The glossy and quality of the cards is just amazing. It is the equal to anything made by the quote unquote bigger companies. Yeah, some people put a lot of lot of you know effort into the cards to make them look nice. Donald writes in for me, I prefer a PDF because I play everything on my laptop. Figured out how to do this years ago out of necessity. Now I just do it because it's easier. Yeah, Donald, I agree. <laughs> yeah, Ron can uh, vote for that. Greg G says, PDS provide a viable option to simply open the file and play without ever printing and cutting anything, as long as you don't mind playing in front of the computer. And we, we just were talking about that. Yep. yep. Uh, I've also printed PDFs and used them as is without cutting the cards, which we talked about too, which worked just as fine. Uh, this works primarily for baseball, but will also work fine for any game produced on team sheets. Yeah, and I usually, if I do that, I also buy the report protectors. Okay, yeah. So I put them into something because I don't really always print on the heavy paper, and it doesn't take much to get jostled around. So right. you can always replace those. You can put two teams in, you know, back-to-back, and so two teams in one sheet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirk writes, I've never bought PDFs and never will. When one buys an actual product, there is not only the anticipation that comes with waiting for a real product to arrive in the mail, but also when I print things on my home printer, it simply isn't as good a quality as what I receive in the mail. I don't know if it's my printer, the ink, or the paper cardstock I use, but whenever I print something, it's just not the same quality as products I buy from the game manufacturer. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's something about getting it from, the quote, the factory that you know it's going to be right, and it's going to probably be really good unless you really invest into some serious equipment to make it fantastic. And And I've seen some homebrew cards, like I said, with colors and logos done up, and it's, it's wow. <laughs> you know, very impressed if you want to get into that. But, um, yeah, if you're just doing standard stuff, then, yeah, I get that. Uh, our buddy Seals fan writes in, I usually prefer to buy printed games slash cards, but in a few instances, the company, the game company's player cards are printed on a stock that is matte and slightly rough, and combined with perforated edges, I find the cards tend to stick together and don't make for easily shuffling through a stack for, uh, if you're looking for a player or changing lines in hockey. Uh, imagine using a team you're not familiar with, and after the game, you're putting the cards away to find a key player who's stuck under another card the whole time. I had that yep. happen to me. Yes, you have. And I forget what game. I think it was... Uh, it was, oh boy, I don't even want to say the name of the game. Cause yeah, I, don't I, go into it. But I, yeah, I it played happened. so many. It, it it might not be the one I'm thinking of, but in fact, it happened a couple of times. There was two games I played, uh, and I couldn't find a guy, and he, he was stuck under another card. And it was hilarious. I pulled up the whole team, and I, I was thumbing through everything, and they were stuck. They were stuck together. And um, in, one, in one case, it was my print that was stuck in another case it was a factory print that was stuck so this happened to me twice so it's um yeah so i i get that can happen uh 
Uh, in those cases, I, the cards I printed myself are on 110 card stock and cut with a paper cutter. Boy, those paper cutters are expensive. I got a little handheld one. Yeah, they one. are, but they're so sharp. Yeah, I you looked know, they'll, at them. They'll last you forever. I went into a card store, a craft store, and I was looking at them. I was like, boy, th- I should get this. I've been doing a lot of printing, but I'm like, ooh, man. You know, I got the little, I think mine was like 25 bucks. I bought at Staples, and it's, it works. It works fine, but the, the big honking ones, they're, they're pricey, but they'd probably be a lot faster. That's what schools use. Yeah. Uh, in a few instances, I have a, uh, had a card set printed on gloss card stock at Staples. That's a good idea. For a smoother finish, it allows fast shoveling through um, through the stack of sorting out players. That's a good idea, too, is go to get the, uh, the gloss card because it probably would be better for shuffling. That's a good idea. Nice. Uh, Giorgio writes, living in Italy, across the Atlantic Ocean these days, PDF is my preferred route, unless it is a brand new something that must be physically mailed to my door. Uh, I used to wait a month to have a game delivered from anywhere in the U.S. to me if it was shipped by surface mail in about 20 days via airmail, with most of that time period where the package stopped at the Italian custom offices, which meant an additional custom duty fees and additional domestic shipping costs. So, again, it's time and uh, extra costs going on right. in the United States. These costs are easily offset by printing it myself or going to a nearby print shot and have it uh, professionally printed and trimmed. I have no problem cutting myself a current NHL card set. So that was It Georgia. depends on what your favorite sport is. I mean, if you're... A casual baseball fan like you are going through 30 teams may not be that. But for me, that's the whole experience. And so I can certainly understand that. Yeah, Depends I, on, on what you want to play. Yep, yep, it does. Uh, Mike writes in, I prefer UPS, but if it's something like Strat App where it's a quick print, uh, makes it easy to play a game, then PDF is a nice side dish to the main course. And finally, Gideon writes in, my preference is always for the printed product from the company, but... Importing games for the U.S. to the U.K. means that it just isn't practical a lot of the time due to postage and custom charges. For example, when you combine postage and custom fees, this can, this can add as much as 30 pounds, around 40 bucks, to the cost above what a resident of the United States would play. Not a fault of the games company at all, but it would mean that, uh, that PDF often has to be the way to go. Uh, I was recently weighing up which of two boxing games to buy. They are both excellent games, but I eventually went with the one that could probably have been my second choice simply because it was available PDF, whereas the other wasn't. Yeah, and of course, with PDFs, it just makes piracy a little bit easier. There's one company I went back with back and forth a few times, like, well, why don't you publish this in a PDF? Um, I don't want my property stolen. Okay. That that makes sense, especially if you're the one that's creating the content. Uh, and I guess you can now lock PDFs and, and such if if you wanted to. Yeah. But that was what it turned into. I don't want my stuff to be freely distributed. I'm not worried about you doing it or your neighbor doing it, but I'm not. I don't know about the person three blocks down the road from you. And, the, and there's a sense. lot to be said to that because again, there's there's nothing preventing people from you know, selling the PDFs after they have them or, or whatever. I mean, it, it is on the honor system, so to speak. So I get where I, you want to protect your stuff. Uh, but some really, really good comments, Ron. Excellent stuff, guys. A, a lot of it, especially for the people outside the United States, cost and time were a factor. I think people in general would prefer the factory goods compared to their own. Um, but but some people prefer to to do it, to, you know, download them and print them up and get creative. That's the thing is for me with some of the yes. hockey stuff, I go a little bit more creative with the hockey stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll add logos or I'll, I'll add colors if if I have that option. If it comes in as a PDF or a Word document, sometimes you can go in and modify those. And I've done with a, a few of the the downy games and things like that. And other times, boom, I just print out black and white from the printer, and that's all I need for this particular game or this particular team. So some people really get creative. They've set themselves up nicely with, with nice equipment to do it upright. Other people just want to sit back and wait for the package to arrive. Again, that package arriving, it, it is something cool about waiting for that to arrive. There's some good points brought up about that. I think that. it also forces you, maybe not forces is the right word, but kind of makes you think about what you want to do for that next project. If because I do it all mostly through computer, so it's the oh, I watched a video on whatever the 1964 World Series, or the other night, Dave, I watched a, the top 100 runs in NFL history produced by 
NFL for their 100th season. And I just sat there and swore at my computer for a half hour because my jaw just dropped. There's some I'd never seen before. And, of course, there's Dorsett in the 99-and-a-half-yard run and the game where Earl Campbell gets his jersey ripped off by the Rams and still – I mean, just like, wow. Uh, and you're like, oh, I want to go back and play – that game right now and yeah. on the computer you can go and do that you can go by the season or if you have a game like otp you can just fire it up and impulse buying is great it's not great to talk to the wife after the credit card bill comes in what'd you do that for but um but if you want if you i want to do a serious project on a and you want the best quality stuff and the guy that was talking about um that being able to print from home is not the same as getting the stuff. I go back to the pizza thing. I mean, yeah, there's a frozen pizza, but if you really got, you know, if your neighborhood pizza place is the world's best, you're going to want that as opposed to the DiGiorno in your freezer. And so, yeah, if I want to do a project and take my time to do it right, it kind of means more, I think, to have it done on. Well, there's, there's good and bad to all of it. It, it, it was we talked about if you mm-hmm. wait for the stuff to come in a you have to wait b you have to pay for the shipping and c depending where you are it can double the cost of the game to do that whereas you know but you don't have that anticipation of the game arriving or the season arriving and you don't have the you know the brand new factory cut cards or, or the the custom game boards that come with the game or whatever it is that you've ordered that is a physical product there's a lot to be said for that. You know, th- there's the good and bad. Again, we talk about the PDFs. Instantly print them out. You can customize them in a lot of in a lot of instances there. So you can add logos. You can add colors. But now you're chewing up, you know, your ink, your paper. You, right. You have and to have the ink. setup here at the house. Whereas if you don't, if you don't uh, want to print, you don't even need a printer if you order the factory stuff. So there is a so you incur the cost at the house, but printing on demand if you have a little setup is fine. And I've gone down to Staples myself. I put stuff on a thumb drive and gone down to Staples, and I've had them print them out. I've had them print out cards for me, like uh, fast action cards, and I've had them score them for me too. And they come out really nice. It was a little bit more money. I've had Staples laminate stuff, and and it's great. It wasn't that outrageous, but but it did cost money. It wasn't outrageous. So, but it's something I would do again in in certain situations. I get on, hey, print this out for me, and the whole bit, and uh, you know now you can play them. So, uh, as far as getting the PDFs, you get them instantly. You can zip them down to Staples, or you can just print them on the printer, you know, in your office, and you you you're playing the game that night. And there's been times on the weekends, Ron, that I've. I don't want to have to order stuff and wait three or four days. Like I say, I saw that video myself. I want to play that game now. I'm going to go and order that season. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to play it here, and I'm going to. You know, for a few dollars or whatever it is for that PDF team or that PDF season, I'm playing and I'm having a blast. So there's the good about that. And then if you want to get into the the computer games, most of those are all digital now anyway. So, yeah, so you can order yeah. that. So that's, that falls yeah, but I, I've been doing this so long that it was floppy disks for Strat. And I think um, the first time I saw Dave Koch, it was still all sent on, PC, on CDs. Yeah. And seasons were sent on CDs. So it wasn't like, uh, you know, today when you go to install and install your own season and buy the code, it was all done on CDs. In fact, somewhere I have still have Strat cards that have codes on them from seasons I bought. Oh, wow. Because it, it didn't, wasn't, it's only been in the last few years where even if you installed your own Strat season and got the code instantly, they used to mail you the code. Wow. <laughs> And then you had to, because you couldn't cut and paste, you actually had to make sure that you typed it in yeah. properly, and then you could lose your temper when you uh, thought the two was a Z or something like that. And there's, there's some companies that have switched over to PDF only. I, I think it just it cuts down on the overhead. It, and, it Printing costs a lot of money. It does. And then the shipping, you know, it's, it's a, sometimes it's a pretty heavy product you're shipping. You're shipping for, paper. Uh, I've done the business thing before. You can grossly underestimate your shipping costs, especially if you're shipping overseas, as was as Giorgio and and some of the others said. Uh, and you would not think. Of course, I live in. We both live in New England, and so Canada is closer to us than than Illinois. And but it's fifty dollars to ship something to Canada, and ten dollars to ship something to Alaska. Like, yep. So. 
So and, um, and yeah, so there's so, yeah, I just want to go talk about that, the excitement of uh you know, of both and you know, the uh, pros and cons of both, and there's there's no right answer here. And, no, and that's not. what we we're getting at. It, it really comes down to your preference. You know, where do you want to spend your money? How fast do you want the game? And depending on, and a lot of people say, like, what is the game? And some people, if there's an option for a PDF versus physical, that that is included in their decision on what game to buy. Mm-hmm. And some people try out the PDF first because it is it's cheaper. You can try it out. Hey, this is great. I'm gonna. Go full board. And I'm going to get a bunch of season. Can go physical. So, so yeah. So there's um th- there's a lot to talk about with that. And uh, we thank everybody for the feedback. That was fantastic. And some things Absolutely. that we thank didn't you. even consider being here in the states is uh, some things that we didn't consider as far as you know uh, the setup for people that had had uh, as far as printing their stuff. So yeah, that was uh that was fantastic. All the comments that we got. So. Uh, uh, f- final thoughts on this, Ron, before we wrap up the uh, No, the talk? it was great. It was absolutely great. So uh, always good to hear. And, and again, like a lot of our topics, Dave, there is no wrong answer. Yep, and if, if, if you didn't get in on the, the conversation, feel free to leave us comments uh, on Spreaker or on YouTube or wherever else you, you hear the show. You can go to our Facebook group and comment uh, when we post the, the, the link to the show. And then we can continue to add to this, this discussion because I think it was a good discussion to have. And, and, and again, I, I get excited about it. I try to look at the positives with everything. And I always talk about options. And that's that was one of my biggest things when I first started playing cards and dice, you know, about a, what, a year ago, a little less than a year ago. The mm-hmm. options that I have, that I started with the PDF games, and now I've got some stuff coming in the mail. And I like having the option for either one. And it's really fun to play instantly. It's sometimes mm-hmm. it's fun to get on the staples and print out a good quality. And sometimes it's, it's fun when that truck pulls up, you're like, Oh man, look at this box. This is going to be great. So it's, um, there is, there's a lot, there's a lot of fun with all this and the options are great. Absolutely. So, so anyway, all right, so let's wrap up show 22 of the digital to dice podcast. So you've been listening to episode 22 of the Digital to Dice podcast. Visit our website, digitaltodice.com. That'll go right to our Spreaker page that lists all of our shows. We're up to 22 shows now, Ron. Unbelievable. <laughs> Not bad. We started this thing just as a little whim, and here we are, 22 shows later, going into uh, 2020. So That's I'm not- right, wrapping up the year. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure about our recording schedule next week with Christmas. It was Christmas uh, on a Wednesday, I think. But who knows? Maybe Thursday or Friday we'll get together and do something. Maybe yeah. we'll wrap up uh, what we got for Christmas or have a Christmas themed show or something like that. Uh, it's 978-751-DICE is the text line. And on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice is our Facebook group. So uh, I'm Dave. Ron, thanks for coming on again. As always. All right. We'll talk to everybody later. Bye-bye. <laughs>